Let's solve this problem. We have steam. It undergoes an isentropic compression in an insulated piston cylinder assembly from an initial state where the P1 is given at 5 bar and T1 of 240 degrees C to a final state where the pressure is 40 bar. Okay, determine the final temperature and then the work in kilojoules per kilogram of the steam. Okay, so maybe we make a sketch. Steam is the piston cylinder assembly at state one. Then it, at state two, it's probably a lot smaller volume because it's been compressed. It's in a well insulated, so during the process, the Q one to two is equal to zero. And um, let's see what else information right here. It's isentropic. What does that mean? That, that means that the temperature at state one is equal to the temperature two. No, that's not what it means. That would have been isothermal. Okay, it's isentropic. So what does that mean? Oh, the volume at state one. No, the volume at state one is not. That would have been isochoric. How about uh, the pressure? No, that would have been the constant pressure. No, isentropic means S2 is equal to S1. The entropy at the final state is equal to the entropy at the initial state. Well, how could this happen that you don't have an entropy change? Well, you do the second law. The uh, second law for this process, you write it out that the mass times S2 minus S1 is equal to this uh, Q1 to 2 divided by TB, but it's it's adiabatic, well, not adiabatic, well insulated, so it's, yeah, it's adiabatic, so it's zero. And then we have plus uh, sigma dot, not sigma dot, plus sigma 1 to 2. So if it's well insulated and reversible, then S2 is equal to S1. That's how you get it, isentropic compression. Okay. So how do we solve for the final temperature? Well, I would make a property table, a table listing your states. So state one, state two, it's pretty straightforward here. Your pressure in bar is fine. So we start at five bar, we end at 40 bar. The temperature in degrees C, you start at a temperature of 240. We don't know final temperature that's what we're asked to solve for no quality this is all going to be out in the superheated vapor we're going to use table a for quite a bit and we're going to be interested in different properties you can put in um, your list of properties the the specific volume the internal energy the enthalpy the entropy okay well for the second law we already see that the entropy is going to be important. So let's put S out here in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. But we look at the first law. So we write the first law for the process. We have the mass times the change in the specific internal energy is equal to this Q, but that was well insulated, so it's zero, plus, or not minus, it's minus the work one to two, and that's it. That's our second law. So the property of interest wouldn't be H. A lot of times we use H if we're doing an open system analysis. But if we're doing a closed system analysis, then U is the property of interest. So that's what we have, a closed system. The mass trapped in this piston cylinder assembly doesn't change. There's no inflow or outflow. So let's go ahead and put you here in kilojoules per kilogram. Okay. So the first thing is, is if you want to calculate the final temperature, then let's step through this. Let's go ahead and get the properties at state one. So we're going to get U1 and S1. Okay. And then from the second law, we know that S2 is equal to S1. So it, uh, it's as if we, for state one, we knew the, the pressure and the temperature to fix the state to get the other properties. But because it's isentropic uh, compression, it's, we're, we anticipate 
pressure and entropy will be the two independent intensive properties which will allow us to fix the state and then get other properties. So I suspect this is still going to be superheated and still use table A4. So let's go ahead and get some numbers and then see how this plays out. So we come over here to table A4 for steam. We look down in our to find the right pressure block. It's 5 uh, bar. We find our temperature, initial temperature was given to be 240. And we find the U of interest. So 2,707.6. And then the S of interest. So let me come back and write those values in our table. So this will be 2707.6 and 7.2307. Again, from now using the second law, we conclude because it's isentropic that S1 is equal to S2. So we can just write that right here. 7.2307. Now knowing the pressure and the entropy, 40 bar and that entropy, can you find the temperature and can you find the internal energy? Well, we go back to table A4, but this time we look at a different pressure block, the 40 bar pressure block and so we, we've, we've got the right pressure by being in this pressure block right here and we need to find where s is in this pressure block so we look and it's it's we just scan through until we find oh 7.23 is in between these two values right here 7.2307 so our temperature that we're interested in has to be between these two values, between 540 and 600. And likewise, the internal energy is in between these two values of 3171.1 and 3279.1. And we do linear interpolation. So I like to break it into two steps. Give me the fraction of the distance between the lower and the higher value going this way on S. And so it's like S minus S at uh, the lower value, S at the higher value minus S at the lower value. Okay, well, maybe you don't like that subscripting. Maybe you think about it is in that right pressure block, it's, it's the S at 540 temperature and the S at 600 minus S at 540. Maybe that helps. Let's just put our values in. 7.2307 minus our um, 7.2056 divided by 7.3688 minus 7.2056. And that fraction comes in at about 15.38%. 0.1538. Using that, we can now calculate the temperature at the state 2, which would be our 540 plus our fraction, 0 0.1538, times the upper value 600 minus 540, and that then comes in at a temperature 549.2 two degrees C. Likewise, we need to solve for the internal energy U at that state two. It'll be the U, the lower value, 3171.1 plus that fraction, 0 0.1538 times the 3279.1 minus 3171.1 and we get U2 comes in at 3187.7 kilojoules per kilogram. 
So this was our answer for part A. Let's jump back to our table. So if you wanted to, we could write that answer in here, 549.2, but that is our answer for part A. And then we need that internal energy, which was 3187.7. Now we can go to our um, first law and we find what is that work? Look at the work units, kilojoules per kilogram of steam. So they're asking us to solve for work, one to two divided by the mass. And so that's going to be um, U1 minus U2, taking care of that minus sign. So U1 is 2707.6 minus 3187.7. And you calculate the work per unit mass is equal to negative 480 kilojoules per kilogram. Answer for part B. Well, I hope that was helpful.